Most of the money in politics in America is spent on advertising. A lot of what you see is designed to provoke a reaction out of you. Whether it's Coke or Pepsi or the president, all of those things can be sold to consumers or voters. I'm Chara Torres Spellacy. I'm a professor at Stetson Law and a fellow at the Brennan Center. My name is Leslie Myling. I'm the former chief technical officer of the Obama Foundation. I've also held engineering leadership roles at Twitter, Slack, and Google. Branding is a very well-known tactic in marketing to define a narrative, and, and the narrative may not necessarily be true. Political branding is trying to sell you a candidate, a political party, or sometimes just a concept that will be used in public policy. It creates what can be a false image of who the person is and what they stand for. The public is much more likely to believe a piece of branding if it comes through a network of trust. It's easy to believe things that are coming from what you consider a trusted source. And if someone is trying to manipulate you, like a politician trying to get your vote, then they will use that network of trust. We now have micro-targeting that is done through digital platforms. You have ads that show up on different social media platforms. Those can be targeted to specific users. They will use that to get you messages that are tailored to try to sway the way that you behave in the next election. Micro-targeting is like your best friend who knows everything about you. They know what you want for your birthday. They know what you like to eat. The difference between micro-targeting and your best friend is that your best friend is generally looking out for what's best for you. They can literally target a message to a particular voter in the hopes of swaying their vote. You might have a different message for people who are registered Democrats than registered Republicans, than registered independents, or people who are not registered with any party. Micro-targeting is I want an 18 to 21 demographic of this income, of this ethnicity, uh, in the zip code. You might not even see the same ad over the course of an election cycle. So you're probably being hit with like a number of targeted ads, all of them slightly different. It is highly targeted. It is in some cases down to the block. And that should be something that concerns all of us because it can amplify people's opinions and their misinformation in ways that we've never seen before. It increases the temptation for the politician to lie to the public. They will just lie in a different way to different voters. For example, a classic type of disinformation that you could micro-target is the message that the election has been moved to Wednesday. And the reason why that's so pernicious is we always vote on Tuesday. And by voter suppression, I don't mean people standing in front of the polls. I mean misinformation being targeted towards communities of color that the polls are closed or that you need a certain amount of ID or that the date has changed. This type of advertising, this type of micro-targeting to communities, uh, particularly communities who may be on the margin, uh, is highly problematic. I would especially warn young voters that if they see a political ad which encourages them to either skip the election or to not vote at all, to take those particular messages and you know throw them in the garbage bin of history. It's complex, it's complicated, it's confusing, yet we can only make informed choices. Navigating political ads online can seem complicated, but here are some tips. Number one, be aware that you are being targeted as a voter. You should know that they have an incentive to not be as truthful as possible. Some of these ads will look like content shared from your friend. Pay attention, be aware, read the fine print. Number two, be aware of misinformation and disinformation online. Misinformation can be pernicious. It can be hidden. It can be right in front of you as something that you may be interested in. You should be very cautious if you see 
things like elections being moved, polling places being moved, if it is in a paid political advertisement. Number three, fact check any political ad before you believe what it says. Ads that are micro-targeted to voters have a high probability of containing either misinformation or lies. Take a moment to check your sources and see if this is something that is true. And number four, be thoughtful, be informed, and be aware before you vote. Think critically, but don't become cynical. Get your information from a variety of sources and ask questions and follow the trail of where the information comes from. My best advice for young voters is to vote. Definitely vote. The election is the way that we distribute political power in the United States. Your vote is your voice. Don't get caught up in the emotional side of what's being put in front of you. Get caught up in the change you want to see and, and run with that.